Good morning, one and all. I greet you warmly from our chapel, the heart of our school, on this fourth day of May, in my first official role as your new rector. I would like to begin with a few notices. All staff will be introduced by their heads in their school or department meetings during the course of today. I would, however, like to acknowledge our long-serving staff. Congratulations to Dr. Gail Drennan and Mrs. Zama Kalipa, who have completed 10 years of service, and Mr. Johnny Smith, who has completed 20 years of service. Thank you for your hard work, dedication, and commitment over the years. When I first began to think about my message to you as your rector long, long ago in February, front of mind for me was that in a way, we as a saints community are like pilgrims, walking steadily and purposefully together. Our destination mostly clear, our path mostly clear. I have always been fascinated by the future, naturally believing horizons to be full of promise and fulfillment. And yet here we are, in a future that has arrived rather more suddenly than is comfortable, rather more dangerously than anticipated, and it feels a little frightening. But to me it remains fascinating. The young people in our care remain fascinating. And so, as I was rethinking what was most critical to communicate to you in this unprecedented time, it seemed to me that we are more like a team of runners, some sprinting, some doing marathons, and some feeling as if they are hurtling across a savannah chased by an angry rogue elephant. Not quite as lofty an image as pilgrims on a noble quest. Yet, what is consistent across those metaphors is our togetherness. We still have a shared and sacred vision. Our common purpose remains. Our path may be full of unknowable twists and turns, but we will keep moving forward together. Like a team of relay runners, we will pass the batons to one another and finish the races each of us must run. To achieve our shared vision and purpose, I think four qualities are essential. They are hope, imagination, action, and faith. I'm going to talk briefly about each one. Hope has, in our daily use of it, become separated from the power it has to hold the human soul. We start or end our mountains of emails with, I hope, we say, I hope you have a great day. I hope you are well. I hope everything works out. And so it becomes difficult to hold on to the precision in the idea that hope is an embrace of the unknown, a gift you don't have to surrender, a power you don't have to throw away, as writer and activist Rebecca Solnist defines it. I would like us to remember that we must hope as we walk alongside our country's young people into a fascinating and challenging future. We must inspire hope. We will embrace the unknown and we shall put the power of hope to work as we figure out how to navigate the twists and turns that stand between where we are and where we want to be as a college of seven schools. And I agree with Solnit when she says that it is important to say what hope is not. It is not a belief that everything was or will be fine. Hope and grief can and do often coexist. By now you might be wondering how? How will we figure things out? How can we live with uncertainty and grief and yet go on hoping? How can we use the power of hope to move us from where we are to where we need to be. I believe the answer lies in imagination. I am not talking about the kind of thinking that is magical or lives in fantasy. Yes, those are certainly aspects of imagination, but I like to think of imagination as a force, a power that gets us where we want to be and achieves identified goals. The journey starts with each of us as individuals, I like what Christian thinker and author 
John O'Donoghue, says that to honourably imagine yourself is one of the sacred duties of imagination. He goes on to say that whoever you consider yourself to be is also the result of your own imagination. I believe this to be true. Each of us needs to be imagining and reimagining ourselves as we respond to the changing experiences that impact and shape us. O'Donoghue goes on to say that, so much depends on how we look at things. The quality of our looking determines what we come to see. I agree. As we look at what is ahead, it is more important than ever that our vision is clear. And the beauty of imagination is that it can be whatever it wants to be. It can hold what does not seem to make sense, what cannot be explained, and what cannot be reconciled, what is contradictory. We are a community of individuals related to each other by a common purpose. That we exist is the fulfillment of a distant hope, a wonderful imagination for the future that 67 years ago began on this farm we now call St. Stithian's College. As O'Donoghue notes, the imagination is always more loyal to the deeper unity of everything. The founders of our school hoped, imagined and acted individually and collectively to bring our school into being in a society which at the time made no sense. For them, as for O'Donoghue, the imagination has no patience with repetition. There is no substitute for original thinking when facing challenges. The times we now find ourselves in call for a similar radical imagining of possibilities beyond repetitive statistics, beyond data, beyond worry and speculative panic, and onwards to a personal and shared creativity inspired by hope-filled imagination. For, and I quote, imagination is the great friend of possibility. Our imaginations most closely link us to God. Our belief that everything is because it was first envisioned in the heart and mind of God. We are here in this place at this time because each of us is meant to be. Each of us has a race to run a baton to share, so that the team stays the distance. And if hope is to become an embrace of the unknown, imagination must move, it must act. Act is an interesting word. It is both a noun and a verb, a thing and a process, an end and its means, a destination that is part of its own path. Just as for pilgrims, the shrine was the end point of the path itself, so too for runners, the finishing line is not separate from the track. If you trace the origins of the word act, you will see that across its parent languages, there are suggestions of propelling and guiding something, moving it along in a particular direction, not allowing it to wander from a demarcated course. Interestingly, our word agency is related. To have agency means to exert strength to make desirable things happen. If you have agency, you are capable of producing an effect, of acting with intention and purpose, of getting things done. In her book, Staying with the Trouble, Donna Haraway challenges us as humans living in disturbing times, mixed up times, troubling times, to become capable with each other. More than ever, we need each person in our saints' community of belonging to have agency and to act, to stay the course and to run with their team. We cannot fall into analysis paralysis. Each of us must continue to hope and to continuously imagine ourselves as a people who get things done, as a community who has shared agency to persevere and achieve our objectives, even as we jump over hurdles along the way. As the writer of Ecclesiastes says, there is a time for everything and a season for every activity under heaven. Now is the time to act, and to act with wisdom 
courage and boldness, we need above all to be a community of faith. John Wesley said, prayer is where the action is. I like this. It reminds us that as a Methodist school, our agency is not a declaration of independence. No, quite the opposite. We do because we believe, as did Solomon, that we are called to trust in the Lord with all our heart and he will make our paths straight. And so my appeal to you is to remain prayerful as we go into term two and beyond in these most uncertain and troubling times. Believe you are meant to be where you are. Be present, exercise your agency, act with intention, show up and make your contribution. And I will make mine. I do not see being the rector of St. Stithian's College as the end of my race. It is not the shrine at the close of my journey. It is instead the start of a new adventure with you, my companions, in this precious and fascinating future that is unfolding before us. The futures of our young people must be full of the evidence of our hope, our imagination, our action, and our faith. We owe them nothing less. Thank you.